This is Jamalabad, a small village in the mountains of Pakistan. It's home to a few families from the Wahi community, an ethnic group scattered across these lands. A lucky coincidence brought me close to one of these families, and they invited me to attend and document their eldest son's wedding. But first, we had a mission to complete. I accompanied Said, one of the younger sons, on a wedding invitation run. Said, so what are we doing here? Uh, we are here to invite our relatives in Farway's wedding. No, it's not easy. In Wahi culture, it's basically kind of impolite to call someone to invite them to your wedding. You have to send a relative, a family member in person to your family members' homes in the other towns and villages and invite them personally. Now, we don't always know the exact address of a family or a home in a village, so we literally are walking around some of the villages and asking people, do you know this guy? Do you know that guy? Where does he live? Where do we go? And that's how we manage. And trust me, not every village was easy to get to. Oh my god, I did it! We did it great! Our invitation run took us far and wide into many villages and valleys in the area and then disaster struck. Of course, something like this had to happen on our errands and invitations run. Flat tire, my very first puncture in my life. I'm gonna take it as a sign of good luck. Okay, it looks like there's progress being made. We're fixing something. This is the spare tire, which looks really tiny to me. And here we are starting to lift the car. How exciting. And back on track. We had so many more invitations to give out. We found out that Kumaris is somewhere over there. Let's keep on driving. Apart from a punctured tire, all had gone according to plan. We managed to invite everybody to the upcoming wedding. iron my dupatta and knowing my ironing skills, this will take a while. This small kitchen ceremony right here, this actually marks the very start of the wedding itself. This is where we make seven flatbreads or shopiks to say welcome to the wedding. All the shoppings that we've been making over the last 24 hours, they have been scrunched up and now they will go into making a traditional dish called chamurki. And this dish is shared as a kind of breakfast on a couple of days before the wedding to welcome guests into the wedding itself. The milk that you see being poured into bowls here, most of this milk has actually been brought by guests. This is traditionally a way to say best wishes to the newlywed couple or soon to be wed couple. The preparations have finally entered their final stages and now we're starting to slowly see a trickle of guests who are coming in to wish the family all the best for the wedding. Yes, this is technically day one of the wedding, but nobody is getting married just yet. Today is a day for the local families to get together, share food and bestow blessings on the ceremonies to come. So it's finally my turn to try the famous chamurki. See how it tastes. 
Mm. It is basically like a very milky, smooth, soupy kind of thing with sponge up bread inside. It's quite good. And it's a lovely way here in this ceremony to start the wedding celebrations. At the end of the meal come the prayers. It's expected of friends and important people in the community to give their blessings and wishes to the family. The work on the Shapix has continued well into the morning. We're on the next day of making them and finally it's my chance to try and make one as well. So I'm just about to start making one of the Shapix, one of the typical local breads that we make for weddings and that we have been making for the last 24 hours, I believe. I don't know how many have been made, but I estimate about four to 500. <laughs> the moment of truth. Like this? Yes, yes. Okay. Got it? Okay, while I've been trying to make this one shepik, this lady over here has already made three, I think. <laughs> Yum. Grandma C, I'm learning. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Eva's shepik. Right. Imperfect, but done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we put it on the stove. It's not a perfect circle, but it's edible. Yeah, Good yeah. shabash. Good shabash. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, outside, the men are busy with a very different kind of task. Okay, with this, that's me. Cut. The cycle of life and death goes on as the bride prepares for the wedding in her house. Back in the groom's house, the preparations are in the final stages. There's one more very important ceremony to come. Throughout the duration of the Wahi wedding, there's quite a lot of different rites of passage and different ceremonies. In this particular one, which is called Shupurjum, this one takes place just before the wedding, one day before the wedding, and it takes place at the groom's house. There's a separate ceremony at the same time in the bride's house. This is where both of them get ready and get dressed for the wedding, and where the initial blessings are bestowed upon them.
Are you happy? Yes, I am too much happy. And just when you thought it's all serious blessings and stern faces, the groom's family lined up a slightly less formal event. So now that these blessings have been bestowed and the official part of the pre-wedding preparations are done and finished, people start to party in honor of the happy couple. And lucky people sure know how to party. Let me show you. That is a power cut. <laughs> and now we wait. Let's hope that this party didn't finish before it began. Finally, it arrived. The third day of the celebrations. The day that everybody's been waiting for. Today, Praveen and Praveen finally tie the knot. Wahi people have their own language, music, poetry and traditions. These drums and trumpets, you won't hear their music anywhere else. Only here. My host family explained some of these traditions to me. The Wahi symbol I love the most is the eagle that soars high above the Pamir Mountains. Traditional Wahi dances always mirror the movement of the graceful eagle. Next step, the groom and his entourage drive over to the bride's village. This is where the marriage will be sealed, formally, in a Jamat Khana, the gathering place of Ismaili Muslims. We've just arrived in the village of the bride, Gircha, and this is where the groom and the bride actually get married formally in the Jamal Khana. That's just about to happen. The new chapter is about to begin, it's so exciting to see it. That's not the kind of music they play at weddings in Pakistan. Before we get to the big wedding party, there's just a couple of formalities that we need to get out of the way. First, there's food. The newlyweds' first meal together. This dish is called Rohul Ptik. And basically, the sharing of the dish starts with the bride and groom when they first get to try this milky soup. After them, everybody else in the room gets a little spoon as well, basically symbolizing that they get to, that they're getting a taste of the love from the newlywed couple. village celebrates the new union. How's the dance? <laughs> it's all very symbolic. Today is the day when Praveen leaves her family village for good 
and that's why everybody gathers around her home to bid her a bittersweet farewell. <laughs> And just like that, a new beginning. The big party will take place in Perfez's family home. Let the real celebrations begin. to fold up the tent faster than the wind and the party resumed in full swing. So I think now you can see what Wahi weddings are really like. There's a lot of dancing, a lot of music, a lot of pretending that you're an eagle high up in the Pamir Mountains and a lot of fun <laughs> and everybody takes part. So that's what makes it so nice to be here. 